Hello, everyone. This is our final day in March of the Expert Spotlight interviews. And so we are ending this week with Jahan V. Shah, and she is here talking to us about three different types of parenting. So I guess we're all going to figure out uh, what type of parent we are. So this could be a little scary, could be a little exciting for those of us that are parents. But um, I wanted to take a minute. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm Angie. I'm the owner and founder of Living Inspired Within. And we are streaming into our Facebook group, Women Living Inspired Within, um, which Jahanvi is part of. And so we take this opportunity every month to do expert spotlight interviews so that women in our group can spotlight their business and also themselves. And so you as a community can connect with other women and other uh, potentially other coaches that can serve you, your business and your life really well. So welcome and thank you for joining us today. And um, if you want to take a minute and introduce yourself and your business before we start talking about three different styles of parenting. So um, please do. Sure, thank you so much, Angie, for having me. Such a pleasure. So like Angie said, I'm Jahan Vishai, and I'm a certified conscious parenting coach. And I basically help mothers uh, overwhelmed and frustrated with the behavioral patterns of their children learn how to parent without resorting to yelling, harsh punishment, or feeling that immense mom guilt, which I think a lot of mommy, a lot of us do. I'm pretty sure everyone has mom guilt of some degree, right? I think some a little, a little more than others, but I think we can all, um, and if you're a mom and you're watching this, we usually say hashtag replay, but you could do hashtag mom guilt because most of us have it to some capacity. I love that. I love that. And I also, you know, go into like, you know, help mothers understand how they were parented and how that's impacted their parenting today, you know, I hope them really understand, you know, get, gain that confidence, that clarity, uh, and that authenticity in their own parenting. So it, it goes quite interesting. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so we're going to dive right on in because I'm interested too. Um, and as a parent, I'm always trying to you know, make sure that I am the best parent, best mother that I can be um, and serve my business and my family and my son really well. So can you walk us through what the three different styles of parenting are? Yes, yes. I, I usually love to dive right into conscious parenting. But, you know, before we learn what conscious parenting is, it's important for us to learn, you know, other approaches to parenting, you know, uh, and how bad those approaches could be to discipline, you know. And then we can fully commit to and, and enjoy, you know, what's so good about this conscious parenting. So uh, one of the parenting style is called dominant or authoritarian or punitive parenting style, you know, the different names, but pretty much the same thing. And this parenting style is pretty much characterized uh, with high demands. I just have a few notes here so I can refer to. Uh, it's a high demands, uh, strong limit settings, and also low responsiveness low warmth and low support. So there is high demand and expectations of their children, but they provide very little in a way of feedback and nurturing. You know, that means these parents are strict and demanding. Uh, dominant parent you know, definitely set limits and are happy to say no a lot, right? But, but there is then, you know, that love is conditional, you know, and, and it's about, all about stopping the behavior uh, then, you know, being connected and having that relationship with the child, right? Mm -hmm. And this is when we use our power as a parent to come over with children and we try to control them. Uh, and this could be, you know, through things like punishments, threats, consequences, rewards, uh, manipulation, you know, basically the goal is to control the child's behavior. So, uh, you know, as I'm, I'm telling you all these parenting styles, definitely, you know, get, you know, curious about it, you know, like there are two questions you could ask, you know, hmm, is this how I was parented? And number two, you could ask, you know, is this something I'm parenting? You know, am I using these parenting styles to parent in some way, you know? So it gets, you know, interesting. So basically you expect your child to do exactly, you know, what you demanded. And you, another thing is you withdraw love and warmth. And you also withdraw your presence, you know, as in like timeout, you know, like you say, you go to the other room, <laughs> you know, you go, 
you know, get your, yourself, you know, corrected, reflect on yourself, or you maybe just uh, check yourself out. You, you may say something like, you know, I'm going to, you know, leave the room and you need to figure this out, you know, kind of thing. So it's just like withdrawing your presence and your love and warmth and support. Okay. Um, and uh, punitive and parents. Do you, mm -hmm. do you have to be, sorry, we have a little bit of feedback. Okay. I think it's gone now. Um, do you have to be, like, are there are the three styles of parenting? Are you always in one bracket or can you kind of flow? between the three or sometimes you're this style sometimes you're this or whatever that, yes that's a great question yes we uh do tend to you know swing between you know different parenting styles and that really confuses the child right you know sometimes you know we are bad cops sometimes we're a good cop you know and and the child never know what cop they're gonna get what parent that they're gonna get that day right so it's really confusing uh, and we we tend to do that, and a lot of us, you know, tend to do how, you know what we were parented with, you know. So if we had a strict parent, that's what we know, and that's what we are doing. Or we had so strict that we want to totally run away from <laughs> being strict. You know, you may have said that to yourself, you know, when you were a kid. I'm never going to be like my mom, or I'm never going to be like my dad when I have kids. And you totally move over to the other extreme, which is also harmful. So it's a great question, something to keep in mind, and it totally confuses the child a big time. Yeah, because they, there's no prediction. <laughs> so I want to, you know, and I, I, I get it, you know, this probably all sounds, you know, in punitive parenting style, it sounds all very harsh, because it is, right? On the other hand, it's something that, like, you know, I said, a lot of us were raised with, you know, a lot of us were raised with punitive parents and many of us, uh, myself included, have many of these elements in our de default parenting, right? So if you're not mindful about it, we go back to our default parenting. So for instance, for me too, you know, when I learned conscious parenting, I kept going back, you know, I, I was parented, you know, as authoritarian, you know, parenting style. And, you know, that's what I did too, you know, as a parent when I had my daughter and uh, I, I went back to, you know, everything in that moment goes out the window because, you know, that's your default parenting style. So it's very easy to go back to it, but it, it's, it's an, you know, it's nice to have these awarenesses and that's, it's a practice. And, you know, like a lot of times they say, you know, you need a coach to guide you through this because these are generational patterns. It's hard to break them. It's hard to break them. <laughs> so, so the problem with this style is, none of this leads to connection, right? None of this leads to connection with your child. And I wanna share some of the results um, that this parenting style, uh, you know, raise, okay. with, raise children raised with this parenting style, you know, how they generally fare in life. So, and this is all research-based, you know, this is not, you know, this is all research-based and basically research suggests uh, that punitive, children of punitive parents tend to have weaker moral judgment and lower self-regulation. Uh, research also suggests that this is probably because dominant style parents tend to externalize the motivational, right, for good behavior. So I'll give you an example, Angie, you know, parents, you know, threatens a child, you know, that they must share because if they don't share, they won't get dessert, right? So the child learns the child should share because if they don't, they will miss out on the dessert, right? They don't learn to share because sharing is kind for someone else, but they don't learn to share for pro-social reasons, but for selfish, anti-social reasons, right? Okay. So, you know, something to uh, keep in mind. And I had a lot of aha moments, <laughs> you know, when I learned all of these things because I, I came I come totally from that parenting style. So, um, so another result was kids with uh, dominant parenting families are also uh, less resourceful. You know, they socially adapt. Uh, they they less uh, you know they less socially adapt to you know in their environment. You know, and they find it difficult to make friends. And this is because they used to, you are so used to being uh, put down, you know, they're used to being controlled and they aren't given the opportunity, right, to make mistakes, to problem solve and to look through, you know, that emotions that they may be experiencing. 
Um, the, another thing research showed in this parenting life uh, parenting style was that uh, they're at greater risk of anxiety, low self-esteem, and even depression. You know, so this is something. Sounds like that. Yes, yes. <laughs> And what happens is as the child gets older, it's harder, right? For the child to turn on their neuro internal compass. And if they grow up in an environment where they are dominated at home, they aren't just you know, going to go out in the world one day and say, oh, you know, my parents dominated me, but I'm not going to let you dominate me, right? So, you know, so they really get to tend to get trapped into other people who want to dominate. You know, we see this, like even in adults, right? We see this a lot. And, and sometimes, you know, obviously those parents, uh, people do not have their best interest in mind. So, yeah. Do you hear the feedback? Do you hear the feedback? I'm gonna try my headphones. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Okay, do you hear? Okay. Yeah, sorry. It's, it's, there's always something. I've I've already warned everyone all the time. I'm like, they, everyone knows I'm not the technology person. I but hear I you. I know. Back, I did the whole training one. Sorry. I but... wasn't engaging as much. I'm like, let me, let me fix this. But oh, okay. no, I, I know a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people, it's a vicious cycle. And if it, you know, as, as adults, then they're, they're in, you know, poor relationships and they're wondering why, right? And they, they then one ends and then they end up in the same situation. So, you know, I've spoken with women like that as well and, and men too, right? It's not just a, a female thing, um, but because this group is, um, you know, but it's, you can get stuck in that cycle. And, and it's interesting too, you know, it's, we learn and like you, it's looking at how was I raised? How am I raising my child, right? And you know, is it, you know, if you don't do this, then you don't get this, right? And I've never looked at it from a, then you're teaching this selfish, um, you know, this selfish response in essence, rather than doing it, you know, for the, for the right thing, so. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we don't think about these things unless it's pointed out to us, right? We don't. No. I know no, I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these kids don't come with manuals. I wish they did, but they do I not. Wish they did. That should be mandatory course to become a parent. <laughs> Absolutely. You should get a book with the delivery, right? Like <laughs> as they're coming out, here you go. Here's their manual. Like, you know, you can drive a car with without a license, but right. you could, you know, parent. You, are, you know, yeah. If you're biologically ready to become a parent, there yes. you go. Become a parent. And you don't know. Yeah. So it's whatever crazy. parents did, we, we, you know, we yeah. take that to the next generation. And, and, and this cycle needs to stop. You know, yes. Stop with our children you know mm -hmm. can move forward with the next generation right yeah so, so what is the second style so the second style is called permissive parenting and this is uh this style is characterized uh by high responsiveness high warmth high support and low demands and loose limits limit settings you know these parents are very reluctant to impose limits onto their children, you know, they, they have really hard time saying no. Uh, and, you know, some of the characteristic of forensic parenting, um, and again, as I'm going through this, think, you know, think, you know, if you have any of these tendencies, you know, yourself, you know. Um, and you can also ask if this is something you were parented with, uh, same thing. So permissive uh, parent, you know, uh, kids of parents, par permissive parent tend to, us, you know, they have low expectations. You have, they have few rules and regulations. Uh, they tend to be very inconsistent. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's a yes, and sometimes it's a no, and sometimes it's a no, and then you change your mind. <laughs> so children don't know what to expect. And they are, in this parenting style, they're really confused, you know, not having those limits and boundaries. Uh, but yes, I would say, you know, this parent is very nurturing, which is great, you know, nurturing and loving towards your kids, you know, obviously, uh, is a good thing. And uh, this parent tend to bribe, you know, you know, such as toys, gifts, foods, you know, as a mean to get their child to behave. And at the end of the day, they do need to get the cooperation and, and, and they don't want to yell or punish, uh, threaten to punish, but they don't know what else to do. So they tend to just bribe. 
and and we see this uh, no judgment here, but you know we see this uh, in in a lot of uh, you know with a lot of parents and a lot of families. Uh, and like I said, they don't feel comfortable saying no. It's it's very hard. And it, this could be like you know again how they were parented, you know, and it could be opposite. If you had a strict parent, you know, you don't want to, you're, you may not be strict, but you don't want to say no because you want your child to like you. So you don't want to say no to them. Uh, and it makes it very different because it's uh, difficult because it's, you know, the experiences you had in your childhood, right? Like, you know, you, you want to be liked, you know, you want it to be liked by your parents and now you want to be liked by your child too. So it's yeah. a different yeah. pattern. I remember growing up and one thing that my parents would say, <laughs> and I don't know which style this would go into, right? And I'm, if my mother is watching this, I'm probably going to hear about this later. But they would say, listen, I'm, I'm not here to be your best friend. I'm here to be your parent. Um, and so I remember that. So that just came to mind as I'm thinking. I'm like, and I'll see them later today and be like, hey, guys, you're this. I'm this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So there is actually uh, uh, like a, a test you could uh, take to figure mm -hmm. out what style you belong to. And, and a lot of times I hear, see it uh, it's, could be a combination, like you said before, you know, it could be combination because, you know, a lot of parents, especially this time, you know, this time, uh, you know, it's, they don't want to fall into either extreme, you know, like before they used to call it punishments. Now, they made it, you know, a little easier and milder and they call it time out or now they even say time in it's not time out it's time in right so it's just different words but the idea is the same you know the experience a child has is still the same mm -hmm. so uh, let me just uh, real quickly go through the results you know the results of uh, this parenting style is children really lack self-discipline you know, they have poor social skills, you know, like sharing, you know, they really have difficult time sharing. They tend to be self-involved and demanding. Uh, they tend to feel insecure uh, due to, again, the lack of boundaries and the guidance uh, they're not getting in the household. And children tend to uh, engage in risky behaviors, you know, that's another thing. And uh, they're also less academically automatically motivated compared to their peers. So these are some of the results of permissive parenting uh, in a nutshell. Okay. So uh, you know, now you know that we looked at the research, right? You know, showing us that both of these parenting styles, you know, how dominant parenting is too cold, too hostile, too harsh uh, for children. There is no warmth, there is no support. And on the other hand, we looked at permissive, which shows it doesn't hold enough expectations. Uh, limits and you know there are no boundaries in this kind of style so now let's look at my favorite <laughs> uh parenting style and and i i really want to emphasize this is the conscious parenting style is where we want to really strive for that this is where we want to strive for and also i want to point out this is the third parenting style it's not so much of a combination you know, it's not like a middle ground between the uh, the other uh, other two, but it's really a separate and a third style. So, what is conscious parenting? Conscious parenting is characterized by high responsiveness, high warmth, high support, high demands, and limit setting. So, if you are conscious, you tend to listen to your child and to yourself. So you care what each of you are experiences. You care about your feelings and needs, and you also care about your child's feelings and needs. <clears throat> and this is hard. Uh, you know, I, I see it with a lot of my clients. This is hard for them because feelings, what's feelings? You know, a lot of times we don't even know. We just know few, you know, angry, mad, upset, happy, sad, right? We just have <clears throat> a couple of feelings uh, that we are aware of because a lot of times we are shut down in the childhood when we experience those big emotions. So, you know, getting aware of your own feelings and needs and then modeling it to your child, you know, is, is a huge key in conscious parenting. So, you know, this also, you know, style encourages uh, independence and autonomy. You know, you're not looking to control your child. You're not looking to tell them exactly what needs to be done or micromanaging them or even on the flip side, right? To help them with every little thing rather to encourage their own unique Self, you know, their own unique path, uh, you know, their, uh, their own unique strengths and abilities that they are born with. So 
you do tend to demand and expect on your child's behaviors and you follow through with these rules where a child of conscious parent knows that there are expectations in, the, in their homes and you know, there are going to be appropriate expectations and demands, right? So they are full aware of it. Uh, and it's not whatever you want in environment. You know, a lot of times parents perceive conscious parenting as it's like, you know, it's, it's like a free way, you know, <laughs> you know, they have yeah. boundaries that no, it's not, it, it really is not. And these parents, you know, express a lot of form, a lot of nurturing. And connecting with your child before correcting. This is the heart and soul of conscious parenting is connection and empathy. You know, you express that through your words, through the way you look at your child, through what you do for them and through the touch, you know, so they really feel it, you know, which I think at the end of the day is what's important is how the child experiences it all, right? How they perceive it all. Um, and another great thing about conscious parenting is you allow, as a parent, you allow them to express opinions. Uh, their emotions, you know, even those big and bad, even the negative emotions, negative opinions, emotions, even about you, you know, you allow yeah. them because you are not demanding, right? You're not demanding obedience, but rather working for that cooperation and collaboration. You know, you really allow them to express their, their unique, uh, unique essence that they're born with. Which is, which is hard to do because, you know, in our mind, you know, as a parent, we are just constantly like, I need to teach, I need to teach. And if now I'm going to give consequences, how is my child going to learn? And that's what I thought. I, that's, so there's, you know, no judgment. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> and it's really interesting, too, to remember and realize they're, they're just small humans. They are, I, like, I like to say they're like a little shrinky dink version, right? They're just small humans and they still have the same feelings. And they still like, they're still allowed to, and this is something I've had to work through. They're still allowed to have a bad day. They're allowed to just come home and be tired and maybe a little cranky, or maybe they just like, they're just done, you know, for the week. So it's, you know, but it's really, we have to remember that because maybe our day was totally different, but we have to allow and give the space for them, like you said, to to feel their feelings and, you know, to be able to express them, whether it's, you know, they're tired or they're frustrated or they're angry or whatever it is, right? Or or maybe they need a hug. Maybe they just need some, some love and attention, um, you know, so it's really, you know, to allow that space for them to feel that and feel comfortable feeling that, right? And as a parent, we're trying to do that. And we're also trying to do a million other things, right? So for those of us that are parenting and running businesses and we're, you know, we're, we're focusing on this and really trying hard to conscious parent. And then we're, oh my gosh, we have an appointment or a meeting over here or running here and we have soccer practice or we have this and this. And, and so it's a lot to juggle. And I know, you know, for me, sometimes I'll catch myself and I am really pleased to say you made my day because I'm conscious parenting. So Yay. I feel fantastic. You made my day, but awesome. it is right. So, and, but it's, but I can still see myself a little bit over here and see myself a little bit over here. And it depends on what's going on and how crazy my day is or how crazy my week is. And so sometimes I'll catch myself reacting in one of the two other ways that I know I don't want to react in, but it's just either it's easier or it's because I'm rushed or I'm frustrated or I've had a rough day or whatever it is. And I'm like, just, just do it. I like, just get it done. Or just like, come on, just brush your teeth. Like, here's yeah. your bedtime. We don't need 20 excuses as to why it's going to keep going on and on. So yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's easy to kind of fall into, at least I'll speak only for myself, but for me, you know, you, you can kind of, we'll say fall off the wagon every once in a while because it depends on your day and what's going on. And maybe we do revert back to what we are kind yeah, of what we're all the parenting. Style. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So, and that's why I feel for mothers, especially, I mean, for everybody, but especially for mothers, it's so important that we look after ourselves. You know, we consider self-care as part of our routine because we need that so badly, you know. Like Amen, our, sister. Well, <laughs> how can we keep serving with an empty cup? We're going to drain you it, obviously, you know. So you that, that's like number one rule, you know, in, in 
you know, things I teach for mothers, you know, I ask, do you have a, you know, self-care ritual? <laughs> That's like number one thing. And a lot of parents tell me, a lot of mothers tell me, no, they don't. They, they know this is important, but they are just not making it a priority. They're not making themselves a priority. And it I get put on the back burner and then you don't realize until it's almost to a point like it's to a really rough point when you're yeah. like, oh my gosh, I had to like get out. And, and I had one of those moments not too long ago. I was like, I just felt really overwhelmed. And I didn't realize until, you know, my husband and I finally, you know, we got out for a minute and got to breathe. And I didn't realize I, I needed that, that space to be able to breathe and that space to be, you know, and, and my family's fantastic. I just needed, and it, it's so easy to put it on the back burner because like you, right, we're serving everyone else. And, you know, as women, especially that's our, that's often a lot of our natures and we're serving our business, we're serving our communities, we're serving our families, we're serving our children. Oh, by the way, we have to serve ourselves. And we talked about earlier this week, right? So the analogy when you're in an airplane, you got to put on your own oxygen mask oh. and before you put it on your, your child's or anyone else's. And it's, it's really easy to forget that. And I know the first thing when we're looking at our laundry list of either agenda items or to-do lists, the first thing to go is self-care, right? Yeah. Typically, um, at least for me, right? I'm like, I don't need to do that. Um, thankfully, you know, working out is such a huge part of my routine, at least it's, it's part of it, like it's built in. Mm -hmm. um, but there's other additional ways of self-care that, that I frankly neglect. Yeah, so. yeah, totally. I mean, we, you know, our to-do list is so large <laughs> that it, it's hard to get to what you really need. I mean, this morning itself, I struggled, you know, like I had a huge to-do list and it's uh, kids have spring break next week. So I was like, I need to complete this. So I don't have to worry about it next week. Um, you know, but I, my body and my, my soul needed something else. So I, it was a tough decision. I was battling. Should I, do? I really needed a bath. I haven't had bath in a long time, you know, and I just needed that calm time. And I gave that myself and Angie, I'm so refreshed and I'm more efficient in my work and what I need to do. And I finished what I needed to finish a lot more quicker than I thought I would, you know? So yeah. I, I, you know, invite mothers to please, 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 please look after yourself. You know, the, the dishes will get done, the laundries will get done, but you need to look after yourself because, you know, you are, you are the, you know, leader of your home. And if you're not going to take up your care of yourself, you know, everything, you think everything else will fall apart if you don't take care of it. But if you don't take care of yourself, you will fall apart. Well, and then everything falls apart. <laughs> I think as, as mothers, right, we know, we know this. Um, and, you know, it, it is really important. So I typically will take a bath, you know, on Sundays. It's part of my routine. Oh, yay. And I need to yes. Bath. <laughs> so I do it on Sunday evenings, but I didn't do it last Sunday evening. And I recognized that and I made a conscious decision, but I did hesitate and think about it. And then another thing is I typically will have a morning routine and I've been, I was kind of rushing through my meditation and visualization and I was still doing my affirmations and everything, but it just felt rushed. So this week specifically, I've been really conscious about waking up and making sure I'm up. I snooze once, which my husband's probably very grateful for. And then I'm out of bed shortly after six. Um, it's like 6.09. For some reason, my snooze button is nine minutes. It's very strange. Uh, mine too. Mine too. Okay. That's, that's, it must be an iPhone thing. I don't know. Totally. But um, so then I get up and I have that time and it's built in and I had kind of let that slide a little bit, even though I was getting it, it was shortened. And it wasn't good enough for me. So I went back to what I was doing and I feel like my week has been stellar. I have all this energy. I'm so excited. I mean, this morning I woke up before six. I was like, okay, I'm ready, you know? And it, it's so amazing just to see when you, when you do practice self-care and when you make it a priority, what a difference it makes in your day. And then that, like you said, we're, we're leading our families, right? So that trickles out into our families and you know, my thought and one of the reasons I started my speaking and coaching business is because I am a firm believer that when we help women realize their full potential, we change the world because it affects their families, it affects their communities, and in turn, it affects the world. And self-care is such a huge part of that. 
So, and it's come up again, again, I think this is, you know, the fourth interview this week, wow. um, you know, and it, it just keeps coming up and it mm. keeps coming up for a reason. So if you're not, if you do not have a self-care routine or ritual, I encourage you to start one. And if you do have one, share it when, you, when you're watching this video or this live, share it below. What is your self-care routine? What is, what is your self-care ritual? And if you're struggling with one, comment and say, hey, I need an accountability partner. I need an accountability buddy on this. And there's someone in this group that you can pair up with that, will, that you can hold each other accountable. It's, it's important. It's definitely important. So true. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, sorry, we got sidetracked, but <laughs> going back to conscious parenting, you know, you know, you know, I'm looking at the clock and for the sake of uh, time, you know, like you, you, you know, you got the zest of it and, you know, mm -hmm. basically, you know, you could say that conscious parenting is really about raising ourselves first, right. You know, becoming those regulated pro-social kind people that we want our children to be, right? So it's, it's all about, you know, first implementing things that we want in our kids uh, and then, you know, modeling it, you know, modeling it. And, and they would want to mirror this, right? This, uh, you know, because if they see it in you uh, in a positive manner, they want to mirror that, you know, they don't want to run away from it. If they, they perceive you as an empathetic person, a person who has compassion towards them, they want to mirror that, you know, they want to, you know, but they, if they see you as a mean parent, they don't want to mirror that, you know, right. they don't want to do that. So, so what is the, do you have the outcomes? I know we went through kind of what happens to children when they go through, you knew I was going to ask. <laughs> Yes, I was actually gonna about to skip it because of the time, but let's, let's no, please it. don't skip it. I need to know. So when you conscious, because there's a reward, right? Not only is it the right thing to do, but it's also the right thing to do for your child. I'm assuming. So why is that? Yes. So children of this style tend to have happier disposition. You know, they have a good emotional control and regulation. You know, they develop good social skills. They are also self-confident in their ability to learn new skills, you know. Uh, you know, because, you know, these parents are warm and loving, their children are more likely to want to imitate them, right? Like I said, which means they are, uh, they view their parents as positive role models, which is, which is so critical because, you know, being role models at the end of the day is the most powerful, if not the only tool that we have as parents to influence our children's lives. But we are only effective role models when our children see us as role models, as people they want to mirror, right? Uh, so because, you know, these parents treat their children with respect and kindness, over time their children are likely to internalize these behaviors too. And when parents exhibit good emotional regulation and high empathy. Children learn these firsthand. So when we as conscious, when we have a good emotional regulation, we are, we are perceived as kind by our children, and then they're more likely to copy us and they internalize, you know, and they want to be empathetic themselves. So, you know, that's in a nutshell, you know, and another reason actually is it makes the style, what makes the style good is you know, they have, we have rules, rules are very consistent, you know, so keeping the house rules consistent lets our children know that what to expect, you know, and plus involving them in the planning process. I think a lot of times parents miss out on this because, you know, they see themselves as the leader and, you know, enforcing, you know, um, things for them to do, you know, you, you know, here's what I'm going to chop, 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 this needs to be getting done. And we don't really involve them. Even, even a two-year-old, I have a two and a half year old, you know, I, I involve him in decision-making, you know, or giving them choices, you know, they feel, because we all have a need to feel powerful as a human being. That's one of the highest needs we all have and children do too. So they want to feel in control too, you know, they don't want to be just told, you know, what to do. They want to have a choice. So, you know, involving them in the planning process helps them, you know, feel they are being cared for and they're being heard. You know, another thing is being heard. You know, a lot of us complain, you know, nobody listens to me. <laughs> you know, like Laura says, we said the mothers, you know, I know I used to say that a lot, you know, like my husband don't listen to me, my parents don't listen to me, my kids don't listen to me. What's going on? But, you know, so we all have this need to be heard and feel important. And, you know, when you involve them, they feel heard. Right. right. 
it, it really encourages independence. You know, it really supports our kids to solve their own problems on their own and in their own way. So they really foster that self-esteem and confidence as, you know, as, you know, they gain success. Yeah. Well, and then they learn, they learn to cope, right? So they learn the correct coping mechanisms and positive ways to deal with life rather than some of the negative ways that, you know, people can choose to deal with, with life. So it's definitely preparing them for everything that they're, they're going out to face in the world at some point. Um, so thank you for being with us, Jahanvi. I appreciate it. And awesome. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. And I'll make sure I put Jahanvi's information below this video as always. So please remember to like and comment on the video. If you're watching this one, you can do hashtag mom guilt or not, or you can even share what type of parenting style uh, you parent with if you are so bold. And thank you again. I appreciate it. We'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.